Hello, everyone. Okay, welcome everybody to the monologue showcase. I've got one big, major, just di like dork fest thing to announce. I specifically had Joey go to the wide angle so you could see me in my suit. <laughs> I just didn't want to get all dressed up and not have you know any anybody see how much I really care and love and believe in each and every one of you guys. We are so excited for you tonight. We do showcases every three months, and you know what? This month, this this quarter is no different. So this marks the end of our monologue show our, our monologue uh, season here and so the next quarter is going to be scene work and it's going to be really 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 fun so uh we're going to deal with all the things it, it's, it's interesting because all the things that we're going to do i was already planning on doing and now we're going to get to uh the opportunity to do some of these things via our devices and and via this new genre that we've invented um, th through this virus and, and everything. So uh, we're really, really excited. You're going to get to learn different camera angles, both hopefully at home and in the studio once we get back. And, um, and, and this online format is not going anywhere, by the way. We are hooked. Like, Joey's a huge fan. Am I it's right? It's the number one format. It's a very good format. It's the number one format of all the acting schools. It really is, Joey, I gotta tell you. Also, while we're in this voice, I may as well tell you, this voice was featured on our most recent podcast, so go ahead and tune into that. Would you say it was the number one acting podcast? I would say it was the number one acting podcast, and Miss Shaylee Stopo was in the studio for this podcast. Shay was in the studio, and Shay rocked it in the studio, I gotta tell you guys. She snuck in, she stayed six feet away. Six feet away, of course. We put up the red ropes to mark the six feet Yes, it was an amazing time. So we are going to be jumping into scene work for the next quarter. That's going to be the next three months. So it would be most of these, the summer months, the heat. We're going to get to work on blocking. We're going to get to work on camera angles. Uh, we're going to get to work on connection with our scene partners. We're going to be diving into scripts. For those of you who are in the master class or want to be in the master class, got exciting news for you as well. You're going to get to work your scenes during the script class in preparation for the master class that comes up in it, I think it's July. So you're gonna have you're gonna have the opportunity to work that in class um, in the next three months. So it won't be every week, but it'll be a lot of weeks. And then if you want to get into the master class, you got to reach out to Shay, and she'll she'll teach you about all the hoops you got to jump through for that. So back to the monologue night. This night, the showcase night, it's for you. It's it's a timestamp of where you are right now. And what's really cool is you're going to get to look back, especially at the beginning of when we went on lockdown, you're going to get to go back and see what your first performance was like compared to what tonight is like. And it's really, really fun to watch the progress and go, whoa, like I had no idea I grew that much in just a month and a half. And for those of you who, who honestly who kept training, because not everybody could, and we felt bad for anybody who had to had to stop for, for any particular reason, and we tried to help as many people as we could. But for those of you who were able to continue training over the last month and a half, just know that you took yourselves to the next level in a huge way in this last month and a half. I mean, it's just incredible. We've gotten to grow with you guys, and we're grateful for you, but we're also just really, really excited for you guys. So, uh, so that's it. So tonight is the monologue. Um, showcase. We're time stamping our skills where we are right now. We get to compare to where we were and then we're going to get to look at where we're going. And tonight I will be a viewer just like everybody else. I have registered for the webinar and I'll be tuning in. So I'm going to be taking some notes. I'll, after the showcase is over, you will have a chance to to come back together in our virtual lobby and hang out with each other for a second. We're going to take a class photo. But before that, I'm going to jump on, just give some general critiques for the whole class, and then maybe answer a couple questions here and there. So uh, so that's the night. We got dressed up for you. We are very excited. We are hoping that you are excited at home. So ladies and gentlemen at home, please, uh, let me introduce our team tonight. We've got Joey, the producer. <laughs> Say something, Joey. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, and we've got Miss Shay Topol, who is producing from her house in Ahwatukee. We need, like, a Shay Topol sound effect, bro. It's, uh, it's with kindness. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Kindness. We, we need to grab that. Okay. Yeah. 
Uh, good. So we got Shay Tobel. And then tonight your host is going to be none other than the quirky, funny, magnificently handsome Mr. Brian H. <laughs> Sweeney. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Time, right? Yo, it, it is host, host time. time. They are right, it is and host. and here's the thing: we are all dressed up tonight. Everybody's you know, dressed up you know, tonight. So because we because we we're feeling the love tonight. Because we're feeling the we're love. feeling the love. That's right, Matt Dearing. All right, I'm gonna go tune. I'm gonna go tune in from my my spot. You guys, you do your thing. I'll be watching every move you make, host. Every, every move you move. make, every move, every, move make, every, you make, every right. step you take. That's it. Everything I think. Matt is watching you. Yes. I like that. All right, you want to go ahead and say hi to everyone while I bring in our first performer. Yes. Hello, everybody. Super excited. Uh, you talking about the online audience? or? <laughs> yeah, just say hi to everyone. Yeah, the yeah. Uh, online audience, all the students are on the live, too, you know? <laughs> That's so crazy. Every, everybody? Everybody's on the live. Everybody's on the live. If you're not on the live, then, then who are you? You know what I'm saying? Guys, hi. <laughs> is that what you mean? Is that what you mean? Just hi? Yeah, I mean, Brian, I know you talk to yourself. We live together. So, you know, if you could talk to yourself, it's no different than oh, okay. when you're on camera. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, you know what? You I... lost your opportunity. It's it's too late. Our first performer tonight is going to be one of our longtime students, Miss Jenna, Jenna Del Pozo. <laughs> we'll give you a round of applause, Jenna, and then you can start as soon as that is over. Well, technology is a glittering lure. And there is the rare occasion when the public can be engaged on a level beyond Flash, if they have a sentimental bond with the product. You know, my first job, I was in-house at this fur company with this old pro copywriter, a Greek named Teddy. Teddy told me that in advertising, the most important idea is new, creates an itch. You simply put your product in there like a kind of calamine lotion. But he also talked about a deeper bond with the product. Nostalgia. It's delicate, but potent. Teddy told me that in Greek, nostalgia literally means the pain from an old wound. It's a twinge in your heart, far more powerful than memory alone. This device isn't a spaceship. It's a time machine. It goes backwards and forwards. It takes us to a place we ache to go again. It's not called the wheel. It's called the carousel. It lets us travel the way a child travels round and around, and back home again, to a place we know we are loved. Scene. Just, just friggin', friggin' wow. <laughs> uh, you know, Matt's gonna go through critiques, uh, but I just, I gotta say, just night and day, night and day. You have done so much work on this, Jenna, and it's been so incredible just to watch you grow. You've been with us a long time, and it's so cool when a student, you know, goes out and they and they stop and they're going to do something because life it just wasn't the right time, you know. And and Matt is saying they all come back, and you came back, and it's like 
you're you're a totally different person and you're growing like crazy and I'm just blown away by what you've done tonight just blown away and and I've really gotten the opportunity to just watch you grow up and watch you like grow into yourself and and wow you are a powerhouse and just way to go just so proud of you and and just so glad that I got to be a part of that process so thank you and and wonderful wonderful job tonight just awesome Okay. All righty. Oh, no, no. If you want to talk, it's fine. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I'd love to if that's okay. Yeah, I mean, sure. You, go ahead. Is that, is that ahead. all right with no, you? No, just, I'll stick to, I'll actually just mute myself. I mean, you, no, I don't want you to mute your, oh, wow. Well, now I did it. Now I did it. That wasn't the intention, guys. I wasn't trying to do that. All right. Guys, guys our next performer <laughs> is going to be... Miss Brianna, Brianna Fogelson. Fogelson. Oh, I really liked what we did there. Yeah. That was cool. All righty. Brianna, as soon as that round of applause is done, you can start your monologue. Hey. Hello. It's Mia. Is it raining over there or something? Hold on, Brianna, we lost you there with a little lag. I just... Brianna? Can you hear me? I'm really good with... Brianna? We lost her. We lost her. All right, Bri. Let's go ahead and have Shay give Miss Brianna a call. We'll move on to our next performer. We'll bring you right oh. back. So, Brianna, it's it's like really laggy right now. So, um, gonna have. So uh, you internet, can yeah. yeah you can switch over to be on a uh, like basically sell your. So Shay will walk you through uh, how to do that, and so um, we'll have Shay reach out and then we'll bring you back in. Okay. Yes. Okay. Cool. And then uh, let's bring the slide down, and I'll uh, speak it over that. For sure, then for sure. Because they heard the applause thing in the beginning. Yeah, hundred percent. I got you. Or you can you can speak over just. Oh, good. All right, our next performer will be v. v. What? <laughs> let's do it together. One more time. What? Ready? Oh, oh my god. V. How do you say your Brian, last name? Brian, why don't you just say it? My what? Your last name. Kinslow. Exactly how it's spelled. I, it's way <laughs> over there. Exactly okay. how it's okay, spelled. Here we go. All right. No, you Ready? got it. You no, got we'll it. do it together. Ready? Right. Three, two, one. The Kinslow. Okay. First off, a line swimming in the ocean. <laughs> Lions don't like water. If you placed it near a river or some sort of freshwater source, that makes sense. But you find yourself in the ocean, 20 foot wave, I'm assuming of the coast of South Africa, coming up against a full grown 800 pound tuna with his 20, 30 friend, you lose that battle. You lose that battle nine times out of 10. And guess what? You've wandered into our school of tuna, and we now have a taste of lion. We've talked to ourselves, we've communicated and said, you know what? Lion tastes good. Let's go get some more lion. We've developed a system to establish a beachhead and aggressively hunt you and your family. And we will corner your pride, your, your children, your offspring, we will construct a series of breathing apparatus with kelp. We'll be able to trap a certain amount of oxygen. It's not going to be days at a time, but an hour, hour 45, no problem. That will give us enough time to figure out where you leave, go back to the sea, get more oxygen, and then stalk you. You just lost on your own game. You've been outgunned and outmanned. Did it go the way you thought it was going to go? Nope. Scene. <laughs> that 
That was awesome. Uh, again, Matt'll Matt'll get into <laughs> Matt'll get into us doing the the uh, the critique part. But I just gotta say, here's here's what I gotta say about you. You are absolutely friggin' fearless. Just fearless as a person. So, um, you know, we haven't known each other that long, but I, I, I'm watching you just, just, you take something and you just go with it. So it started, first off, you only had this monologue a week. You were like, okay, I want a new monologue. I'm going to challenge myself. You memorized it right away. You went after it. I gave critique last week and you said, boom, let me just go with it. That's bravery. Like that's just attacking. Way back when, when Matt started with this piece with you and he liked it and goes, okay, I want you to lean into the accent and totally change it in that way. You're like, cool. Let's go. Like, you just you just go, and so that's so awesome. And uh, I just want to encourage you to keep doing that because that's how you make really cool discoveries, and that's how you're gonna just keep uh, challenging yourself and taking yourself next level. So it's been so awesome just having you here in the program, and and we love you so much and are so thankful for you. So you rock. <laughs> All righty. All righty, Joey. Uh, you got this. Our next performer is going to be. Brooke Mueller. Uh, Brooke. All right, Brooke, as soon as that applause ends, you can go ahead and start your piece. We are trying to build up life, Lady Hudsonton, on a better, truer, pure basis than life rests on here and this sounds strange to you all no doubt how could it sound other than strange you rich people in england you don't know how you are living how could you know you shut out from your society the gentle and the good you laugh at the simple and the pure and living as you all do on others and by them you sneer at self-sacrifice and if you throw bread to the poor merely to keep them quiet for a season. With all of your posh and wealth and art, you don't know how to live. You don't even know that. You love the beauty that you can see and touch and handle. The beauty that you can destroy and do destroy. But of the unseen beauty of life, of the unseen beauty of a higher life, you know nothing. You have lost life's secret. And your English society seems to me shallow, selfish, foolish. It has blinded its eyes and stopped its ears. It lies like a leper and purple and sits like a dead thing smeared with gold. It is all wrong. All wrong. Scene. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Brooke, I just have uh, so much to say about you, but I'll refine it down here. <laughs> oh, Captain, my Captain. We'll start with that. No, uh, just seriously, you, you've uh, grown so much. Like, you just keep growing. I had to. I had to. It was one, like a— That one just hurt. It was it was needed because, you know, I'm sure we'll see Captain at some point just before get back, tonight ends. Just get back it's, to your It's important. Brand. It's important. Captain's her dog, and you can follow Captain um, on Instagram. I'm sure we'll talk about that later. Uh, but seriously, Brooke, like you, you work so hard, and, and you just recently overcame this fear that you had of 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 like performing and and these thoughts, and, and now you're you're owning roles. Like you owned this. You said like, let me just go for something and do something different. And and so I'm just so proud of you for that. And you're just gonna keep growing. You're gonna keep getting better because you're the kind of person who gets after it. And so way to go. So fun to watch. And uh, thank you for continuing to grow with us. And we love you very much. You rock. Oh, Captain, my Captain. All right. Well, it wasn't my, good the first time. It definitely it's, it's wasn't good, good the second time. time. It's always good. Oh, uh, Captain, alrighty. my Captain. Our next performer is going to be... Micaela Encias? Oh, <laughs> oh, my God. I'm bad with last oh, days. Oh, my goodness. Okay. Well, you're just Should bad with names in general. Uh, yeah, yeah. All right. As soon as the applause ends, you can go ahead and start your piece, Micaela. <laughs> Don't do it. Don't open that little box one more crack. Don't ask me to marry you. <laughs> Shh. Don't say another word. Just listen. 
I can't let you do this to me. I mean, before I met you, I used to be such a bitch. I mean, seriously, everyone at work thought I was a huge bitch. No one actually liked me. Those people I introduced to you as my friends, they're not my friends. They're scared of me, or they were. Before I met you, before you, I never said please or thank you at restaurants. I never smiled or laughed at anyone's jokes but mine. I never used to tip more than 10%. I was quick with insults. I always had a cruel word. I was cold, cross, crass, falsely compassionate. But since being with you, I've begun to feel all warm inside, fuzzy. I find myself wanting to stroll in the park and whistle. I have these thoughts, these urges to donate to charities and help out in soup kitchens and hug people. Since being with you, I've given nearly $10 to homeless men, helped three old ladies cross the street, and I bought my so-called friend a present at full price. And it was something I knew she'd like. Don't you see? Don't you see you've made me nice? And what really scares me is that you open that box, ask me to marry you, and I'll, I'll just nicely say yes. And then I'll be nice with life. I'll be singing kumbaya for the rest of my days. I'll give back to the community, to the Salvation Army, to the Make-A-Wish Foundation, and I'll do it anonymously. And then one day, years from now, I'll wake up, and I'll have the horrible realization that I lived a good life. Yep, that I contributed. No, please, for the love of God, just put that box away. I mean, the planet already has millions of nice people. It doesn't need me, too. I'm a bitch, and I want to stay that way. Please, just stop. Don't. I'm asking you. No, you know, I'm begging you. I'm getting down on my knees. Will you please, please not marry me? <laughs> Scene. All right. <laughs> wow. Just what a transformation. What a transformation. So you got some critique last week and you just ran with it. You totally ran with it. And I'm just so proud of you. I'm so proud of you. You are so joyful. Like you got done with your monologue and you can't help but laugh. Like you can't help but smile. You just have this contagious, joyful energy that's so amazing. And so we're just really blessed to have you here and have you like spreading that because it's so important to just continue to share love and laughter. And so thank you for that. And thank you for continuing to grow and continue to develop yourself. You did so great. You are awesome. Thank you. Joe Man. Next up we have... Kimberly Lords. All right, Kimberly, as soon as the applause ends, you can go ahead and start your piece. And I can't unmute you on my end, so you just have to unmute yourself. So just do that really quick. Yep, you're all set. All right, once that applause is done, you can go ahead and start your piece. Why do these guys play these stupid games. I mean, why do they have this dumb three-day rule? I mean, if you like me and you're thinking about me, pick up the phone and dial my number, right? What is it? So you don't look desperate or something? They're trying to prove their manliness? Waiting three days is stupid and gets the guy nowhere. And by the time he does get around to calling, who wants to be bothered? I'm not going to sit around and wait for him to call. Three days ago. Yeah, it was Saturday. Ugh. I like talking. I'm a good talker. I love talking, actually. But he needs to call. You know what? When he does call, I'm not even going to answer. I'm going to let it go to voicemail, and then we'll see if he leaves a message. It's him. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. It's him. What should I do? No. Don't answer it. 
let it go to voicemail. Okay. I'm waiting for it to make the little beep noise and somebody leaves a message. He didn't leave a message. Darn it. So I've picked up. So I've answered. Did I call him back? Does it look bad to call him back? I mean, he didn't leave a message. What should I do? It's him again. Okay. I should probably answer. Okay. Okay. Hello? Let's see. Kimberly. Ah, oh, just so good. So good. You, you found new things to do. You found new ways to explore. For me, the story of you is so cool. Like just thinking back to the beginning, Matt talked about going back to beginning videos. Like when we were coming in and it was like, I remember being in the front room and working monologue with you and, and how shy we were on, on delivering lines. And here you are now, like you're attacking. You're coming and you're going, Boom, like let me hit you with this line and, and, and fearlessly trying things. And so it's so cool to just get to watch you do that and watch you transform in that way. So highly encourage you to go back and watch that beginning one because you'll just be absolutely blown away by how far you've come. We are, we are just so proud of you. You are such an amazing energy and light. So thank you for being a part of our program and we absolutely love you. Great work. <laughs> Yay. Joey! Next up, we have Mr. Wyatt Root. Woo! All right, Wyatt, as soon as the applause ends, you can go ahead and start your piece. Here we go. Here's what's not beautiful about this town. <laughs> From here, you can't see all the rust or cracked paint or whatever. But you can tell what the place really is. You see how fake it all is. It's not even hard enough to be made out of plastic. <laughs> it's a paper town. I mean, look at it. Look at all those cul-de-sacs, those streets that turn in on themselves. All the houses that were built to fall apart. All the paper people living in their paper houses, burning the future to stay warm. All the paper kids drinking beer some bum bought for them at a paper convenience store. I've moved four times and never once in my life have I ever met someone who actually cared about something that matters. Scene. Woo! Good job, Wyatt. Good job. You were absolutely brave tonight totally brave we gave you the direction with the phone last week and to try and test different things and you did it man you just said let me go for it so not only did you have the emotion that was necessary and the feelings that were necessary but you kept our attention throughout and for for our connection to you man you are so important to us like you're so your crew man your crew and we miss you guys like crazy and and so just getting to watch you grow and, and, and help you through just your motivation and, and continuing to grow as an actor has been an honor for us as a studio. We miss you like crazy, and we're just very proud of you both as a performer and as a person. So nice work, man. Great job. All righty. Next up we have Miss and Andrea, Andrea Vercelli. Vercelli. I, I'm sorry, I was not going <laughs> to pronounce the last name right. I'm so sorry. All right, as soon as that round of applause comes through, we will start your piece. What? Why? 
Might I, um, burn the bitch's hair? Torch her trousses? Light her locks? Her hair was a symbol of purity and my lighter was a symbol of corruption. God made me do it. The devil made me do it. Charles Manson is just so damn persuasive. She was Joan of Arc and I was the townspeople of Salem. I did it for Jodie Foster. Boredom. Plain and simple. It was, um, it was a cry for help. A plea for insanity. Red rum. Red rum. <laughs> I mean, come on. Can't we just blame it on the government or the education system or something? PMSing? Puberty? My parents? Fine then. I did it because I felt like it. I mean, they do say love and hate are the two closest emotions. I love you so much, it borderlines insanity. You're all I ever think about. <laughs> I'm just messing with you. It's probably just the lithium talking. No, 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 no. Don't hang up, please. Um... Okay, um, I I'm pregnant, or I was pregnant. Don't worry, it wasn't yours, but, um, I had just gotten an abortion, and the next day in biology, we were ironically learning about reproduction. And I was just sitting there listening to Miss Rainey talk about fallopian tubes, the uterus, eggs, and... I'm feeling sick to my stomach already. I mean, I'm trying to focus on anything else that's happening in the room. So I decided to read a note over Miss Puritanical Princess's shoulders. And she's just sitting there telling her friends how, how happy she is that she's a virgin and how she's going to save herself till marriage and how, she dis how disgusted she is by all the whores at our school. I mean, without thinking, I reached into my pocket and I pulled out my cute little red Bic lighter and I set her cute little red hair on fire. And every day in therapy, they ask me if I feel sorry and <laughs> I just can't, no matter how hard I try. You know, people like her make me sick. They, they made me sick. I'm now sick psychotic, unrepented, and unremorseful. I've been branded a sociopath and I can't do anything but accept it. Scene. And now she's smiling, right? That's right out of it in a smile. That's one of the best things about you right there is you have such a contagious smile. Just your smile lights up every room that you go into. And, and Andrea, the cool part, uh, you have such a story with us in that you started with teen class. You know, you came in and, and you started working. You worked really hard and you worked your way right into the adult class because of your work ethic. And those two things combined are going to be such an awesome thing that so many people need. Like your discipline and your ability to do your work and then also have so much fun, it's hard to find that balance. And so we're just really blessed to have somebody like you. I know you're going to do great things as you keep growing and, and, and graduate here. And we love you so much and are so thankful for you. So way to go. Nice work. All righty. Next up we have Miss Emily Barber. Emily, you are about to go i was gonna say unmuted but she had already unmuted herself so there we go all right all right <laughs> you, can start, you can start as soon as the applause is over
So what made you do it? No, what enticed you to make me fall for you so hard? And go as far as making me believe that you're a godly man. Was it because I just seemed easy? Was I appealing at the time? Or was it because you just wanted to know what I was like in bed? No, no, you never cared about me. I was the one who cared and I was the one who got hurt. I believe this false persona you gave me and you let me, you let me while you hid behind my back rekindling your previous relationship. Oh no, babe, she's just crazy. I want nothing to do with her. Dude, seriously, stupid me for falling for your words and not following your actions. I even opened up to you about the abuse in my past relationships and you just praised me for my authenticity and how scummy those guys were and yet you did the same thing. You destroyed me. My whole life felt numb. I have to thank you, though, because, you know, at the center of all of this pain was God. You know, every single time I just cried into my prayers, I literally just felt God hold me. And every time I wanted to give up and just not try anymore, he gave me his strength. And I knew that my pain would have a purpose. And although through the thick of it, none of it was comfortable and everything seemed questionable, I never lost my faith. And sadly, you don't understand that. You see, I didn't act out of fear. I didn't run from my problems. I gave my vulnerability to my father and let him carry me, even though I felt blind. I didn't go back to what was comfortable or what was safe because I knew beyond my growth was so much more. You know, you say you're this God-fearing man, but you let fear of everything on this earth run your life. And you say you care so much about other people and you have this big heart, but no, no, no. You do things at your own benefit. At the end of the day, it's you who I feel sorry for. Because, you know, you're over here trying to make me feel crazy and trying to tarnish my name and act like I was this horrible woman, but yet all while you were doing that, what was I doing? I was growing roots so that I could be planted with my God now and forever. So when another health son like you stumbles into my life, just like you did, I'm not going to budge. <laughs> you know, go ahead. Call me crazy. Call me delusional. I now know I never needed to stress over a guy who made me question my own worth. My security, now and forever, will be in Christ alone, not some stupid guy. Scene. Woo! Emily! Yeah! Totally different. Oh my gosh, night and day. Ah. So, first off, just got to talk about you. Um, you are such an incredible woman of God. So cool. Like, you can just feel it when you talk through this piece. And, and what's so amazing for the whole audience watching, she wrote this piece. She wrote it and took it all the way from that concept to creation to execution. And it's so amazing. It's so amazing to be able to take something from your own heart and, and put it to paper and then affect other people with it. And that's what you've done here. And so... Leaving this class, beyond this monologue, I would be inspired to keep doing things like this. To keep writing. To keep building your own stuff and putting it out there. Because people need to hear the messages that each of us have to say. And when you do something like this, you have the power to do some amazing things for God. And I believe 100%. You are a warrior for Christ. 100%. And so, He's going to use you in these kind of ways. And so, we're just so lucky to have you. So lucky to have you. Ah, oh, way to go. Nice work. All righty, next up we have Brianna Fogelson. Woo. All right, Brianna, we're going to try this Let's one. Let's go for round two. Round, round two. two. It's, look it's looking much better, so here we go. As soon as the applause stops, you're good to start, okay? No more lag. No more lag. You're looking good. Yeah, okay. you're very much better. 
mucho better. Thank you. Stop reading. I'm really no good at this confrontation thing. Normally, I just get so nervous that I faint or run away, or sometimes I even get sick. But you really didn't need to know that. But I'm not so afraid anymore. You see, my dad helped me. Earlier this evening, I had every intention of giving up my claim to the throne, and my mother helped me by telling me it was going to be okay, and by supporting me like she has my entire life. But then I wondered how I feel after abdicating my role as Princess of Genovia. Would I feel relieved? Would I feel sad? And then I realized how many stupid times a day I use the word I. And probably all I ever do is think about myself and how lame is that when there's like seven other billion people in the world. Sorry, I'm going a little too fast. If I cared about the seven other billion people instead of just me, that's probably a much better use of my time. See, if I were princess of Genovia, then my thoughts and the thoughts of people smarter than me would be much better heard. And just maybe those thoughts could be turned into actions. So this morning when I woke up, I was Mia Thermopolis. But now I choose to be forevermore Amelia Miguinet Thermopolis Rinaldi, princess of Genovia. I'm signing off right now. Scene. <laughs> Scene. Good job, Brianna. Nice. So you are a hard worker. <laughs> a hard worker, Brianna. And one of the things that's so great about you specifically is your your desire for knowledge. So you are never afraid in class, never afraid in any situation to just ask a question, to just go, hey, what can I what can I learn here? How can I grow here? And every class, every place needs somebody like that. They need somebody who's willing to throw out a question because most times somebody else has it. And so you're so brave in that way and you've grown so much as an actress since you started here. Uh, it's it's just so cool to watch. So keep, keep going, keep working so hard at your stuff because it's it's showing there's a huge difference when you look back to week one and all the way to now so great job brianna really proud of you and so happy you're in our studio family thank you good job Woo. all righty next up we have jonathan buckley jonathan jonathan you're gonna go ahead and start that monologue as soon as the applause is over all right all right. All righty, here we go. When I was a kid, I used to wake up screaming from these horrible nightmares. I used to think there are murderers and kidnappers coming to get me in my sleep. Weirdly enough, it gave me this bizarre comfort. No. At least I'd be on TV then, and people would cry about how young I was, and what a horrible shame, and what a waste, and yada, yada, yada. These days, it isn't the waking up that's rough. It's the trying to get to sleep. I just lie awake and think about how I used to believe I'd be a millionaire by 30. And that was if the economy was bad. How I'd be married by 25 and have a family after that. That's how it's supposed to work. 
A degree is supposed to be useful. Or maybe I'm just lazy. Or maybe I'm just doing it wrong. Or maybe I should have studied to be an engineer like my mom said. Anyway, these are the things that keep me awake at night. That weird voice that tells me I didn't get anything done that day, even though I worked a 10 hour shift at the store and read three chapters of War and Peace. That should mean something. I feel like it doesn't. Maybe it's just that I'm not young enough anymore to be looking forward. Things are supposed to be happening now, not mop up on aisle three happening, real happening. Grad school and teaching and tenure. And I come home instead and turn on the TV and fall asleep and I never go out and meet anyone. And maybe this is my life forever. Okay, okay. Did we lost in there? I think we did. Hey. I I didn't know what else to do besides hit the besides applause. Besides hit the applause. Let's see if moment. he's back up top real quick. He is not. He's not. Okay. Well, let's move to the uh, the next performer, and if we can get him back in, then we'll go uh, towards the end, and if not, then we'll figure that out for next time. Sounds good. Our next performer will be Nicholas Malata. It was so weird typing in Nicholas because <laughs> I'm so used to calling him Nick. Right. Yeah. It's it is different. It's totally different. But we <laughs> called everybody by their like full yeah, name. Yeah, you gotta go so full I name. Like, I don't want to be rude. It's elegant. To his go full his name. Instagram handle is also Nicholas Malata, and I always try to type in Nick, and every time I put that K in, I can't find him anymore. <laughs> so, anyways, uh, Nick, we'll go ahead and you can start right after the applause. And Nick will be our last performer of our showcase tonight. So unless Jonathan pops back in. Okay, unless <laughs> Jonathan pops back in. <laughs> Here we go. You know, man, I like her. I really like her. You can even say that I care about her. A lot. You know, Jessica's a great girl. And I know I say this a lot. Maybe it's a problem that I have, but I think she's great for... Uh, somebody else. And I, I just don't see us together in the long term. And, you know, I, I hate when I do this, this shit, when I start visualizing the future, when I should be focused on the here and now, in the moment. You know, I, f I fantasize about the white fence and the house and having the kids, but you don't want any of that, man. So what am I going to do? Change her? No, no, not her, man. Is any of this making sense to you, man? Cause I'm starting to think it's me, you know, it, and I hate all this, this judging that I do. All right. I mean, the girl, she's sitting next to me. She's she's trying to connect with me. She's telling me that she loves me, and I got all this other bullshit flying around my head. I mean, what what am I gonna do? I'm breaking up with her. This weekend, Saturday, I'm doing it. I'm gonna break up with her, and I'm gonna consign her to the list of women who, the wonderful, amazing women that. Holy shit, man, it's me. It's always been me. I, uh, I guess I just, just need some, some time alone. Scene. 
Boom, dude. Makes a statement throwing down the glass. I'm done. I need to be alone. Uh, Nick, dude, we love you so much over here. You're you're just you're such an incredible guy, and you've got you've got such a great story. If you guys haven't checked out Nick's story, um, we put it up on our YouTube uh, under our stories of our students, and and Nick just talks about his life and what's taken him into where he is with acting, and and you're just such a great guy, dude. You're so incredible, and and when you came in, you know we started with improv, and you've grown into both, and and you've learned so much how to just like own yourself. And we're still battling, battling, battling with the mind always. But like, your confidence has grown so much, and it's just been so incredible to. And I'm, honestly, we're all super honored to even just be a part of your journey and getting to watch you do that. So, I know you're gonna make a lot of people laugh, and I know you're gonna bring a lot of joy to a lot of people who need it. And so, we're just very thankful for you and excited to help you continue to cultivate that. You are the man, Nick. Oh, we got Jonathan back. Hey. We did get Jonathan back. Jonathan. All righty. Jonathan, you got to connect to audio, bud. I'll tell you, Jonathan, as he's doing that, um, this kind of stuff happens in any format. So whether we're on stage and a light goes out and we have to deal with it, as actors, as people who are dealing with, with things right in the moment, there's always going to be something that comes our way. Always. Like, always. Nothing will ever go as we expect it to. <laughs> and so, one of the greatest things I hope uh, as an actor, as a person, you can take out of tonight is learning right now to release. Release when things don't go the way we expect them to. Release when something doesn't happen the way we want it to. And, and focus on the things we do have control over. Focus on the work you do on the character. Focus on all of that stuff. And, and then from there, we can build a solid foundation where someone gets to really learn and, and grow off of the performance that you're giving. Um, and so we're going we're gonna to continue here. We're going to keep trying to get you in here for a second and, and get this to work. Um, but, but that's the whole thing. Like No matter what format you're in, it's going to end up where things get thrown your way. And the biggest challenge for an actor and a person is if, if they can learn to control their mind through that thing. Um, so we're going to work for a second and see if we can get that, that up. And uh, if not, then we'll continue forward. And I know you gave a huge part of your performance that Matt can go through and, and critique and break down, and, uh, and we'll figure out how to move forward from there. So uh, cool. Let's see. It's the video. Checking in, just the video right now? Yeah, the audio still isn't clicking through. Gotcha. Okay. What if we uh, try really quick? We're going to try sending uh, sending you out, Jonathan, and bringing you back in really quick. I, I did that already. Oh, you did that already? Yeah. Like out, out? Mm-hmm. Cool. Yeah. Gotcha. Were we on a different device earlier? Can you hear me, Jonathan? Be like, give me like, yeah, if you can hear me. Give me a head nod. Okay, great. Were, is this the same device you were on earlier? Yeah, we just lost audio. We're gonna we're gonna go ahead and have uh we'll have Matt critique and yeah. coach him at the end for his monologue. They can do that after class, but let's go ahead and just bring everybody back in. Okay, cool. We'll do that and we'll figure out what we can do. So, cool. When we get like, in, well, yeah. So let's fix. Yeah, yeah. That's great. So we'll work to get it together for you, Jonathan, and if we can get it to going, we'll just do it right here in the uh, group thing. It looks so. like it's working. Is it Jonathan, working now? can you try to talk? Hello. Hey, we got it. Okay, cool. We're going to solo you, Jonathan. You're going to be a spotlight video. So hold on one second. Joey's the man. Uh -huh. the Mr. Tech guy is going to set that up for us. <laughs> Everybody, boom, boom. I had it on the wide angle, so everybody on the live was just watching me and my thinking face. Watching him and his think, just it's uh, it's. I'm not gonna lie, my thinking face is not all that flattering. I think I think it's it's pretty intense. It's like, it's like it, it, yeah, smolder. it's like an intense stare. Yeah, and it's uh, it's powerful. My mouth is usually open like halfway. <laughs> it's super weird. All right, we're gonna spotlight you, Jonathan. Yeah. All right. And then pin it as well. I don't know if I can get it. 
Let me know when I can start. Sounds good, buddy. I'm going to put up your slide again. <laughs> All righty. Our, our last performer of the night is going to be Mr. Jonathan Buckley. Go ahead and give you a round of applause here. When I was a kid, I used to wake up screaming from these horrible nightmares. I used to think there were murderers and kidnappers coming to get me in my sleep. Weirdly enough, it gave me this bizarre comfort to know at least I'd be on TV then. And people would cry about how young I was and what a horrible shame and what a waste. And yada, yada, yada. These days, it isn't the waking up that's rough. It's trying to get to sleep. I just lie awake and think about how I used to believe I'd be a millionaire by 30. And that was if the economy was bad. How I'd be married by 25 and have a family after that. That's how it's supposed to work. A degree is supposed to be useful. Or maybe I'm just lazy. Or maybe I'm just doing it wrong. Or maybe I should have said to be an engineer like my mom said. Anyway, these are the things that keep me awake at night. That weird voice that tells me I didn't get anything done that day, even though I worked a 10-hour shift at the store and read three chapters of War and Peace. That should mean something. I feel like it doesn't. Maybe it's just that I'm not young enough anymore to be looking forward. Things are supposed to be happening now, not mop up on aisle three happening, real happening. Grad school and teaching and tenure. And I come home instead and turn on the TV and fall asleep, and I never go out and meet anyone, and maybe this is my life, forever. Okay, okay, that was a little dark, wasn't it? <laughs> I tell you, I get this way sometimes, but then I look at these, like, Hollywood superstars, and did you know that John Nelson was 26? when he played Bender in The Breakfast Club. I mean, he was playing kid, and he, and he was older than I am now. That thought kind of caused me down. I mean, I'm not a movie star yet or anything, but I still could be. I'm youngish. Anyway, I still got time. See. Woot woot. Woot woot. That was woot. that was worth the uh, technical difficulties. That was definitely worth it. It was, and what's nice is Jonathan, you're the only one that gets to see everybody else clap for you. So you know, <laughs> special uh -oh. treatment, sir. Oh, well, thank you. Hello. <laughs> he said, well, thank you. Hello, 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 everybody. Okay, so now's the time when I'm going to jump in and do a little bit of critiquing. And uh, I'm going to kind of go rapid fire because of uh, how much time we have and also what tonight is for. Tonight is really to celebrate your growth. It's not really as much for the critique, but I do want to make sure that you're left with something that you can work on uh, so you can bridge this week uh, going into our scene class. So, um just let me know. I have them all muted. So if you tell, if you go one at a time and let me know who you're doing, then I can unmute them for you. Very, very well done, Joey. Good communication. I appreciate that. You guys all agree? They can't say anything because they're muted. <laughs> huh? I, huh? What, see what I did there? Okay, okay. I got the power. Power. All right. So here we go. Uh, first and foremost, uh, wowza. I was on the live 
the the live link thing so not your guys page i'm not sure if you were on the page or on on the the webinar page but on the new webinar thing it's so cool that we're we're building you can actually comment back and forth so for our future classes when we have auditing classes from around the world i mean auditing students i mean we've already got students coming in for kids classes and different things from other states it's so cool you guys ideally in the future are going to be in the class in person hopefully and then we're going to have people around the world auditing and taking notes and, and you know asking questions and so i was i was doing a lot of writing on the side so all your family who was tuning in could see i, I just blown away you guys really blown away by everybody and the thing I'm blown away by is progress because that's all I really care about. You know, it's like, where were you compared to where are you? And this is mandatory for each and every one of you. Write this down, follow through with this. Please go back and watch your progress. At minimum, minimum, watch the very first one of these types of classes when we were doing it in this format and then rewatch tonight. And just give yourselves a chance to say, wow, good job. Because I guarantee you, each and every one of you, if you don't realize it, you're going to go, dang, I really grew a lot in the last month. Like, I really, really took myself someplace. So um, so that's that's first thing. And then, the, like, the, I, I think one of the reasons why is the amount of confidence. And you see it, you see it even with us on what we're doing but we I we see it in what you're doing because when we started it's like oh this is a new format I don't know what to do and now all of a sudden you're just acting it's like I know how to act I just gotta you know I just need to figure out how to do it in the new format so um, so the confidence was huge it's like a big deal um, okay so here we go I'm gonna rapid fire everybody let's put up uh, put, 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 I gotta wash my peas let's bring up uh, Jenna please Jenna unmute the Del Pozo what's going on Jenna Hi, how are you? Happy to be alive. See, are you acting from the bathroom again? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> I, I wrote a book, <laughs> Acting is My Day Job. You could write a book, Acting from My Bathroom. I think that'd be great. <laughs> be a bestseller. I, I'm always surprised because I think she's in a library, but it turns out, no, she's got a really fancy <laughs> bathroom. <laughs> um, okay, so so it, it was it was really great. I mean, really good. You you hit that, You hit that really nice note of being... I guess for a better word, sexy, you, you know, you were, but, but not overt. Like it was, it was sort of like, just like the, the character Don Draper, it was that idea. Like you hit this moment yeah. of sort of untouchable. I'm not coming on to you, but I'm very confident and, and I'm okay with the fact that, you know, maybe, maybe I'm attractive. Like that's okay. Like you, you, you hit that note with your words very well. Um, for your critique, I want you to look back on specific sentences and see where you wish you would have connected words, especially at the ends of sentences, and you kind of like stopped and then finished the sentence. And it's, it's usually just you thinking or a moment happened or something, but there are certain moments where ideas should have been together that weren't. So that was, that was one of the things. And then the second thing was, and, and this is going to be all the next three months, what we're going to be doing. And this, this, this next critique goes for everybody, so I'm not going to repeat it. I, I really want to see how we can get more creative with the camera. Some of you did yeah. some interesting things, but for the most part, we can all get better at that thing. And I would have liked to have seen, Jenna, you finding something, some new ways to, to use this genre um, to your advantage. So mm -hmm. um, that is it for you. Thank you. Well done, young lady. Okay, next up we got V, please. Hey. Boom, 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 boom. She in here? Mm -hmm. That's her right there. Hey, oh, good. Hello. <laughs> I'm like looking over here, like, where is she? Okay. We have like all, you have, have no idea. We, this feels like a TV studio in our studio. Yeah, we got like four monitors. <laughs> we, have, we have monitors everywhere. We have lights. Like, we're, we're just, you know, every week we're trying to make it better in some way, shape, or form because we're just addicted to growth. So we're, we're like, it's a little overkill, but it's actually really fun and cool. Well, before we tear it down, we should let all of you use it because it's really, really neat. Um, okay, B, so um, really well done. I, so my favorite part, I'm just going to tell you my favorite part first was when you came back into camera. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Okay, so watch that, and then think to yourself, how could I have created more moments like that? 
and it doesn't it doesn't even need to be movement some of it will be but it's also just the way you use the language to help us tell the story so in your accent you were going a little quick for me to really understand everything that was going on and you got to give yourself room to move notes and th this is a big critique for everybody too is this idea of moving notes and slowing mm -hmm. down and diction and so some people I'm going to be more specific on this with but everybody can pretty much always grow in that area it seems like um, but this one especially so there were there were moments when I just wished you could slow it down just a little bit so I could really see the turn yeah okay um, and then and then more physicalization so that's the other thing you know what physicalization is not sure <laughs> okay so basically what, what what physicalization is it's using your body in a way to tell the story so if okay. I was if I was to say um, yeah he was sort of like a, mm, like a little kind of guy you know what I mean like he was sort of mm -hmm. tiny like that type of like like and a little bit I don't know like what would you call him like stout I guess uh, like finding ways to use your hands and use your body to help to help tell the story that okay. also helps with addiction because you can you can almost mime it as you go and but every actor should do this like when you watch me work with somebody and I take them from just saying the words to physicalizing the words and saying them it's like magic I mean yeah. all the comedy seems to come out and it and it tends to slow you down too which is really fun gotcha okay so when you move into your scene work I want I want to make sure that you're adding that element in and we that is something that we're going over because we're gonna be talking a lot about movement and blocking um, in the next three months so we'll be doing a lot of that and we'll be working on physicalization too but there's no reason for you not to start working on that now with this piece gotcha okay well done very very good next up Brooke alrighty give me one second to da -da 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 -da. see I told you this is a great angle right here oh it's a wonderful angle. I was texting Joey and I was like dude you gotta go to this angle because it's less Aki on Brian he literally <laughs> okay this is not a joke he came in and he just moved the TV and I was like, "No, I did. That's <laughs> my monitor. <laughs> I can't see it anymore." It doesn't matter because I couldn't. I couldn't take another uh, close up on Brian going. <laughs> but you can't blame the guy. You can't. No, it's not. It's guy. not his fault. Like yeah. he's done with a really good speech, and then there's still a close up on you. Like, what are you supposed to do, Brooke? I should stop talking and say hi to you. Hello. Hi. Hey, that was that was good. That was much better. How'd you feel? Um, I. Focus on the progress I first. Focus on the progress first. How'd you feel? I okay, I, I feel like it still obviously could have been better, but I do feel like I didn't know that I was up next, so it kind of caught me off guard, mm. and I think that was good because I'm always so, like, like mentally, I'm like, okay, I have to have all of my, like, lines memorized, and I have to, like, do it like this and this and that, but, like, catching me off guard, I think, made me not think about it as much when I was doing it, which good. I think allowed me to be in the moment a little bit more. So for someone like you, who is Judgy Wudgy was a bear on yourself. <laughs> judgy was he? Thank you. You really, <laughs> really got to um, watch your progress. You have to because it can, for all of us, it can feel like grass growing. And then all of a sudden, when you look at the timestamps, you go, oh, dang, like this is really, really good. So the progress was outstanding. Even your diction was so much better. Having said that more 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 yeah Be because when you find a way to use those consonants especially when you're playing upper class like that it's 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 a world of difference yeah okay because you can you can really really put somebody in their place using proper diction it's 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 powerful so focus on that focus like that that should be your thing when you watch yourself back look for the moments where you're like oh I wish I would have slowed down a little here I wish I could, would have popped that word because there's certain words that are so important that if we don't hear them it, it doesn't help us tell a, as good of a story yeah but other than that I mean if we just focus on growth I'm just like I just, I'm feeling like a round of applause you know just like in my head just happening Joey's not he's not Here's the thing. That I was, almost pressed it, and then I was like, eh, I don't know. Well, now, now don't, because now it's too late. But <laughs> you got it? 
Good? <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're moving on. Thank you so much. Next up, we've got Mickey. Uh, so I, I think we can, is it? Mikaela. Uh, I know, but can, can we can we call her Mika? Is that okay? Because someone, someone on the live said Mika. Is oh, it? yeah, that's probably my best friend. Yeah, my yeah. My friends call me Mika. I don't like it. But you don't I like it, me. but do your friends no, do it? I hate it. Really? <laughs> Yeah. All right, Mika. Mika. <laughs> you can call me Mika. You can't even say <laughs> Mika, right? <laughs> Mi- Mikaela. Yeah, no, I could I could say it, but I'm just saying, like, all right, Mika, I'll just call you Ayla. How about that? <laughs> that's, that's, like, my nickname for you now. Um, so, uh, okay, you, you took the direction and ran with it, and I got to tell you, I'm so I'm sitting up in the lobby. I wish I would have had a phone on me. We should think about that for the next showcase. 100%. Just so, check in with you like 10 seconds behind. Just every now and then just watching <laughs> me react. So, no, no, we'd be live, actually. Oh, no, it would be behind it you, would right? be yeah, Well, yeah. technically it would be live over here, but yeah, you yeah, would yeah, be yeah, seeing yeah. something 10 seconds behind. Okay, anyway, moving back to this. <laughs> uh, I laughed out loud. Like the beginning, I was just—I mean, I obviously I know the monologue, and I'm—I'm I'm just like barrel laughing in the very beginning. So, so very good with that. Um, I think you can look for places where you can move and and create more notes in there, because okay. it—it seemed it seemed to go like sort of the same. And then interestingly, where we went at the end, I didn't even think you needed to go there. Okay. <laughs> You know, like I, I think it's it's interesting almost for her to like call herself bitchy and stuff, but just be super nice and just be a girl that's just really trying to get out of this marriage. Like, I just don't want to be with you, <laughs> you, <laughs> you know, and so you're, you're like, trust me, you don't want to be with me. You know, I don't know. It's re- it was really funny when you played that note. So okay. I'm thinking if you if you can find that place to live and then play different notes within that point of view without without going all the way the other way I don't think you need it because yeah. because it, okay. it was really funny and I think you're going to get some more laughs at the end by not bailing on that choice okay cool yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was good very good thank you you're welcome good job all right next up we got Kim Kim I love this angle dude I was telling you like it, it's no joke and you it, look, you do look funny. good when you're searching for people. Yeah, it's funny. I just got that concentrated face, but I can't, I was deciding by looking at this angle whether I should be back here. Yeah, but you look so handsome when you, yeah back there's better. But yes, yeah, yeah, it's good. But it's hard because then you can't hear me. So Kim, I'm the like, progress is unreal. Oh, uh, thanks. <laughs> Agree. Yeah, I felt I felt good today. You yeah. should. You I should was, feel really good. I was going through it like all day today. Like everything I was doing, I was saying monologue along with it. Amazing, so. amazing, <laughs> amazing, amazing. And you know what? You can learn from that. Here's here's what what we did with the masterclass students. Like Joey, for instance, has been rehearsing every morning with his scene partner. At, was it five or five thirty? Something 30. like that. Five thirty in the morning mm. since masterclass ended. Mm. So for th- for for a class that doesn't start f- till three months from now. They've gotten up at 5.30 and been rehearsing every morning, except for the mornings that Joey slept in. <laughs> Not <laughs> no, but slept for real, like, in. Like, it's unbelievable, right? So what you can do now is take this and run with it, meaning mm. why not do that again tomorrow? Mm. Just, because, just because there's no showcase doesn't mean that you need to stop growing and grinding. And so I'm going to give you a couple notes. Take these notes, keep working it, and bridge yourself till the next class so that you keep growing. Then as soon as you get the script that we're going to give you, then you can start right up on that. But you don't ever have to stop that kind of work ethic. I mean, that can just be who you are. You just say, this is the way I work always. Mm. Okay? Okay. Yeah. All right, here we go. Um, so so the I, I, I really have one note for you here. So my main note was just to have – some stop points and to make sure that you're you're careful with when you're talking to yourself and when you're talking to the other person because i I think sometimes she's having thoughts out loud and then sometimes she's actually talking to her friend or whatever that she's discussing this with and then he's calling right um Mm -hmm. so so just sort of that and then and then when you have the stop points give yourself a little bit more time to just be quiet and react and trust that what's what's coming out on your face is really good so mm-hmm. so it's okay to stop sometimes okay okay so you, you you think to yourself um you know what like forget it there's like i'm not even gonna talk to him today like there's no freaking way joey that i'm gonna talk to her today okay joey joey you hear me yeah there's I'm... no there's jo- joey there's 
she's calm. Like right now, she's calm. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Like that little stop mm-hmm. there. I want to see that moment of you seeing it and then realizing you have to change your mind from what you were just saying and now come up with something new. Okay. So that, that's what mm-hmm. I mean by that. All right. Okay. Wonderful. Yeah. Wonderful work. Wonderful growth. You got to go back and watch it. You're going to be thrilled. Okay. Thanks. You're welcome. All right. Next up, Mr. Wyatt. Wyatt, 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 Wyatt. Hello. Root. <clears throat> hey, guys. It's Wyatt. Hey, guys. It's What's up, homie? What's up? How'd you feel? I feel good. Better than previous times. Yes. I like the changes I made. I, I agree. I thought the changes were great. And you seem more under control. And the same critique I gave everybody, you felt more confident to me. Mm-hmm. Let me ask you this, though, because this is really, this is your critique. Other than being more creative with the camera, which we're going to be dealing with starting next week, but this is your main critique. What do you suppose are the two most important words of the entire monologue? Paper town. Oh, paper town. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> and 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 you and you sort of mumbled those things. Yeah. Okay. So when you said paper town, you just sort of said it quickly and it didn't it didn't hold like meaning. So then it's hard for us to draw the analogy back and forth. And when you do that, when you say it and it has that meaning of what is a paper town, it's sort of like uh, there was a whole show around this house of cards. What is a house of cards? It's fragile. You could blow it over, you know, just one little like nick of the table and the whole thing's gone. So mm-hmm. a a paper town, like what does that mean? It's it's very you know, there's there's not a lot of it's it's not built on a strong foundation type deal, right? So yeah. just just think to yourself, okay, when you go back and look at that, go, ah, I missed that moment to really put something deeper there so that I can connect all the other moments to it. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Who's who's knocking yes. in your room, bro? Who's trying to hide back there? I did you That's see what this? I thought. That's what I, of course I saw you. <laughs> you can't just sneak in here, Isabel. I was trying to be sly. Well, you weren't. You were not out. sly in the in the least. Yeah. <laughs> like like we could oh, like oh. we you are not gonna get hired to be a spy around here. I, I promise you. <laughs> Shoot, <darn. laughs> but we God. miss we miss both you guys. We really do. We oh, can't we wait to see you guys. You. It'll be very we soon. I have a feeling. It's all yes. up to Yay. the it's all up to the deuce, but we'll find out. Yep. <laughs> All right, take care, guys. Next up, we've got Andrea. Is it Andrea or Andrea? Do we know? Huh? Andrea. Andrea? Is she Anya? Well, now we'll never know. Um, I don't think she is. Okay. Shay, can we call Aunt Andrea? Andrea? Andrea. Emily, you're up. Emily Baba. All righty. Hip hip cheerio. Hello. Hello. How are Hi. you? Hello. I'm good. How are you? I am happy to be alive. How'd you feel? Same. I felt really good. Uh, my adrenaline rush was very high because, as Brian said, it's a self-written uh, monologue, and I just I think tonight I really allowed myself to really be speaking to that person. Mm-hmm. And my problem with allowing myself to do it is that it's just because it is based on like real life things that have happened to me. Mm-hmm. Um, it's hard to let yourself get that vulnerable, but I really feel like it took me to a different level of like where I can be um, tonight. So I just like rehearsed all week, and I was like, you know what? I just gotta let myself like see that person and truly believe that it's there and I really did and it like really pumped my adrenaline and made me feel like really good afterwards so awesome I'm so happy for you I I was I was thrilled I wrote this in the comments I, I just I remember just so the transformation of this monologue even the, the writing part of it and it's 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 really beautiful it's it's a nice piece it's very powerful yeah maybe maybe Shay will reach out to you and we'll we'll uh we'll give you writer credit and put you in our our book we're writing a book called monologues that don't suck I heard. yeah okay you heard so yours is great maybe we we'll want to add that in um so here's my here's my critique for you it's so good you needed to slow down even more okay so i wrote this as sort of a joke but not really you, you need to honor the writer 
the writer wrote some really good words and the actor needs to slow down and make sure that we hear everything that she's saying because it's really important. So let me ask you this. Since you are the writer, we, I can ask you something very intimate. What would be, would you say, you would, you would hope that people would get from this? What, what, is, what is this character? What is she feeling? What is she going through? And, and what, what is an audience supposed to pull from it? What I ultimately, my goal is, um, what I want to be like pulled from this is that, um, don't be afraid to, uh, be vulnerable and let yourself go through the emotions of anything traumatizing in your life. Uh, obviously this talks about a breakup, but with anything, um, if you're going through grief, I want you to know that like, if you're a believer, like if you ultimately just surrender all of that to God, like he will show you that absolutely everything in your life had a purpose to bring you to something better. And there you go. All it's there you go. That's it. You. There you go. That's it. So now the next critique is when you get to that spot to the God stuff, you need to breathe into it and let yourself get emotional. Let's your, let yourself connect to the moment of you getting through it and 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 all the pain and then how you kind of got out of it and the, the happiness should should ideally pull some of that deep emotion out and then I, I want you to visualize this like this is very exciting okay how how crazy and interesting is it going to be when another actress finds this monologue and performs it yeah right <laughs> like it's going to happen <laughs> and, and, and and the actress is going to see the writing and, and they're going to like dig in and they're going to be like looking at notes and they're going to be like, what did she mean by this? And they're going to really dig into it, you know, and, they, and they're going to they're going to try to figure out your writing and 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 think, what am I supposed to pull from this? Mm -hmm. And so therefore, I think this um, my, my advice is going to be produce this thing. Finish it off. Okay. And, 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 and just we're, we're going to, even if we did it here, like produce the monologue. It's self-written, so you own it and put it up and then like really act it out all the way. And, you know, the description is self-written monologue, sharing this with the world. Uh, maybe, maybe you add the transcription and we let people have it, you know, and then, and then you've given the first, the first version. So you're like, hey, this is my take on it. But then you get to see how other people bring it to life, you know. I mean, imagine, yeah. imagine a 13 year old girl bringing this to life. Yeah, that's yeah. You know, and then like, a, <laughs> and then like a 40 year old woman bringing it to life. Like, like it's going to be really cool. Yeah, I right? agree. Right. That'd be so awesome. It's going to oh, happen. I, yeah. I can already see it. It's going to happen. <laughs> it's like, it's already done. What are you feeling? Thank you. Ah, oh, emotional. Yeah. I just, I've worked so hard to like, I've, I've been through so we talked about this on your show. I've been through so much in the past year and it's just, I can't help but be just thankful for where I have like come and just like how much I get to like, and it's not even about me. It's like the fact that I get to like bear this fruit onto other people and help them grow. And that just really warms my heart. Cause I know that's what I was put on this earth to do. Absolutely. So when you t say things like that and like other people are going to like read it and like dissect it, and maybe even relate to it just makes me really emotional because I, that's my ultimate goal. So. Well, and, and I and I asked you your goal. I got the goal from you. So now know that if, if I'm an actor and I do my work right, I have to turn to God to do the part well. Yeah. So you just like you just but, found a way to draw people to God, which was your your original goal. Boom. Mm -hmm. Boom. That's so big. Yes. It's so big, it and, that, really big. and that's why I want to help. You know what I mean? Because I see this, I see that as a, a mission, and go, I can get behind that, no problem. Yes, I didn't even like really think of it that way until you put it that way, and that's that's a really good way. Yeah. Well, let me that's tell you, like, let me tell you, yes. I didn't, I didn't think of it that way until I saw your performance. Oh, thank you. Oh, You're welcome. Gosh, but then, but then you. I watch it, and I go, okay, it, it, we need some work. It, it, you got to fix some things. So you need to look at it. Mm -hmm. But then it's like this needs to get out like oh the writing's good it popped tonight So now you need to make it pop even more and then you got to produce it and you got to you got to share this with the world They you know people need to see it Absolutely, I agree. Thank you so much. Oh my goodness. Thank you. You're thank welcome. You, Have a great you. night. Okay, next up. We've got Brianna You
Just yeah, so you, you got know. me, Joe, man? Yep. Just so you know, Andrea's back, too, as well. Oh, okay. Andrea, we'll circle back to you. Uh, here, we've got, we've got three more, and then I'll come back to you. The second I put her in, it went gray. Brianna, can you hear me? She's froze over here. She's frozen. All right, let's go to Jonathan. All right. Shay, if you can bring back in Brianna, that would be great. Jonathan, my man. What up? What up, fellas? You're doing a great job tonight. Hey, dude. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, honestly, you, know, <laughs> you want to know something funny? We are doing a good job tonight, and we're doing a way better job than we did last night <laughs> because <laughs> last night was our first showcase uh, in this format. So to tell you the truth, we had notes for ourselves. <laughs> but, you know, we got, we got through it, and we definitely did the best we absolutely could. But tonight... Tonight feels a little bit better, dude. Um, speaking of better, you were better. I know you had some interruptions there, but how'd you feel? Really good. I thought I was doing a really good job. Yeah, I agree. And I and I thought you were connected. I could hear your voice. You sounded very clear. Um, I, so I just have questions for you now. And I think I asked you this before, but do you ever use a phone? Like, can you hold a phone? I can hold it a little bit, but it's a little, it's a little awkward. It's awkward. Okay. Uh, can you hold it still? Is, is it possible? No. Okay. Um, we might be able to f figure out a way to, to mount something to the chair. That's, that could be a possibility too. Um, so, so what's interesting is I don't mind the awkward if, if we can pull yeah. it off. So it might take some coaching, but you know, I know you're going to relate to this because I've been preaching this since day one of, of the quarantine and the, the message I'm trying to get across to everybody, and, and the reason I'm preaching it so hard is because I'm really trying to tell myself the same thing, which is focus on what can you do versus what can't you do. And I know Jonathan yeah. Buckley would relate to that message, right? Yeah. Yeah. So now that you've gotten through it and you've done this to this next level, I was just talking to Robert Farthing today, as a matter of fact, uh, um, from, from Reser Ad Agency, because we were talking about castings and you know, and how things are going to be coming back and, and when and some yeah. things like that. And, um, and we were just talking about how th things are going to change, you know. So just so you all know, I've been saying this, but it's, it's factual. You're going to need to know how to audition like this. Yeah. And the training you've been doing in the, ne in the last six weeks is massive, massive for what's about to come. So I can't really say more than that other than kudos to you and keep up the work. So having said that, Jonathan, I've, I've, I've pushed you in this way in class, and I'm going to push you now in this virtual class. I don't know, right. I don't know yet what it's going to look like, and there's going to be probably a lot of fails like we failed last night. But I, right. I'm, I'm excited to see what happens when you, in this format, move, move around and you use the chair. Yeah. And take some silences and think. And so I want you to now, now that you did, because you gave a good performance and it was and it was solid, but it was safe. Yeah. You agree? I agree. Yeah. So now I want to see now I want to see you push yourself and see see you think outside the box and go, you know what, even if this is a big bomb and, and Brian or Matt's gonna critique me on it and we'll go back, like allow yourself to fail big. Okay? Yeah. Like that's going to be my big note for you. And then when you watch this back, it's really the same critique, but it, it felt safe, which means that I think there were moments you probably could have gotten more emotional and, and moments where you could have moved notes a little more. Right. All right. All right. Well done, Migo. Well done. Good to see you. Well I look forward to when I can hug all of you guys, but especially Jonathan. No offense, everybody. He gives a good hug. I've got I've got video proof on huh, Joey. You do. All right, we got Brianna back. Um, yes. Brianna. Hello. Hey, I hear you okay. now. Hello, hello, hello. Hello. Nice to see you again. It's great to see you Many too. Yes, yes. So how how are things? How how did you feel about the monologue? I was really nervous today, honestly. School was just kind of banking in on me, and um, I just felt really overwhelmed, but I just thought that I would just focus on the monologue, try to find something new, even if you were sick of it. And um, <laughs> Were you, were you yeah. sick of this piece? Yeah, kind of. Yeah. not going to lie. Okay. But. So, so let, me give you, let me give you a um, 
this might be your critique then for tonight, and this this could go for everybody. I I never um, I never say I'm done with a piece ever, but what you can do is retire okay. it. Okay, so the mm -hmm. piece can be retired, but it's not you're not going to be done with it, or or it's going to be on furlough. That's a little quarantine joke. Anybody? No? Huh? Huh? Okay. I think if we had people in the audience, they would have laughed. All right. So, so what I what I what I mean by this is, this is a piece you can always come back to. And when you do, so like today, like you said, you were trying to find something new. The only way to have fun with a piece is to find something new in there. Like that's the only, that's the only way to have fun with it because doing the same thing over and over again gets boring. And you know from our teachings, we we are adamant about not giving the same performance twice ever. So you finding something new in her is going to be a really fun, unique challenge that you're going to do later. So put this piece on furlough. This, this piece is done for a while. Don't forget it, though. So keep the memorization going so you can always come back to it. And then what I like to, to see happen with myself is – especially if I've worked really, really hard on a role, I like to come back to it six months later, a year later, doesn't matter, five years later, and think, oh, like, based on how I've grown as an actor, I wonder how I, how I would approach this monologue now. And then, then you go back into something old that you haven't worked on in a while, and it gets really exciting to dig back in and, and go, oh, you know what, I've grown a lot as an actor. Um, I can really bring something new to this piece, so that'll be that'll be your next step. Um, so as far as your as far as your cri actual critique, I thought the pacing was really good. Um, the only thing that I I was missing was the little bit of. So, I haven't seen this piece, but I did. I mean, this movie, but I've I've asked about it and 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 whatnot. So, is is she a princess? Is that is that what she is? And like a perfectionist, and like the whole point. Of oh, yeah. Did you miss that? Um, do you mean like in the words? Or in the movie. You mean... In the movie. Yeah, in the movie. Um, she eventually becomes a princess. The whole point of the speech was to just kind of reclaim her throne after almost giving up and abdicating at the last minute. But she thought, I'm going to go back and do it because of my father and he and how he encouraged and inspired me. So that's yeah. what happened. Yeah, good. So I, I, I liked that you were bringing out something raw in her. I thought that was really nice. I, I want to see what, when you come back and work on this, work on more of her perfectionist side and her princess side. And then, and then, okay. so then we can see, so we can see you coming out of it. More princess side. Yes. Okay. So this is the you know this is the moment where she's not acting that way, but you're st it's still underneath. So it's it's got to be layered in. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you mean like at the end of more, or is it just like over time still? It's 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 like I don't know how to how to say it. Like, um, name a princess. <laughs> N name somebody th that's like sort of considered that way. Somebody that's that's got that sort of vibe to them, a, a person. Perfectionist, um, or like uh, Kate, what's her name? The you know Kate Middleton or Meghan Markle. Megan, yeah. So thank you, Brian. So Kate, Kate Middleton. Um, now imagine her sort of roughed up a little bit, mm -hmm. you know, and she's and she's going, you know what? Whatever. There, the princess is still in her. You know what I mean? Like she's the, you. You would never. It's not going to go away completely. She'll just be. She'll just be that person in the rain. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So she's saying, I don't have to be perfect, but there's still that, that perfect side of her is still going to be underneath. So it, it, it's a difficult thing for me, what I'm trying to explain to you, but basically when you're layering a character, the, their core can never go away. The core can never go away. Okay. So I'm going to put you on the spot right now, like big time before I move on. How would you describe me? You like that? You? Joe? Yeah, me. I would say you are very wise. Um, 
you want to help people you okay good so so and 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 this is your this is what you've seen right and i uh, i'm just gonna stop you there because those are those are great things i mean we don't have to say only the next <laughs> no no i mean here's the i'm i'm wise obviously yeah um <laughs> but now so now imagine this okay so there's this side of me and you're right like th the things you mentioned are definitely a part of who i am now take me the way you know me i can't not be this but at the same time when i'm in my silly mode I'm totally different, but this actually doesn't go away completely. Like there's there's always a part of this that lives inside me. So it's not like one or the other. It's like they're you know it's it's layered in, right? So that's that's what you have to work on with this character. You have to make sure that she doesn't lose her core. Yes. All right. Okay. All right. Good. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, Nick, step right up. Hello, sir. Hang on. Be I'm fine. happy to be alive, bro. All right, there you go. Did you just read his Ooh. lips? Yes, I read his <laughs> lips. Come on, dog. I'm a wise old owl. <laughs> all right, dude. So so first of all, I want to just um, mention this because one of the things we're going to be working on is how to use this, this genre over the next month. Um, and I loved how you had this really quick intro. So, you know, Joey was bantering about your name for a minute and this and that or whatever. But as soon as the camera came over, it was like, go. And that's really interesting. So you know that it's there and you just trusted it and you went and it like it grabbed our attention immediately. And that's the those are the kind of things that I'm talking about where you can you can find ways to make this, you know, interesting and exciting. So that was really good. Um, overall, I thought it was really good. I thought you had a really good control. I, I thought your confidence was high tonight. What do you think? I, I felt good. Um, I felt good um, as far as my confidence goes. I've been practicing and rehearsing a lot. I decided to add a, a couple of things like the drink. I found out that I couldn't really make the whole monologue funny unless my character was completely smashed and then I would lose something at that point. Yeah. So I, I decided to try to balance it out and, um, and work on it that way. And I came up with what I did tonight. Good, good, and I and I thought it worked. So my only my only big note then, and I don't know if you're if you're gonna require alcohol for this or not, but I think he needs to have a like bigger flips in emotion. Okay. So all of a sudden he's gonna have this like great idea, or something. You know, I think there's a part where he he says something like, you know, I know, I'm just I'm just gonna break up with her, or something like that. I I'd like to see this sort of other personality pop out. And he's like, oh, you like you got it. And he comes up here, and then he comes back down, realizing it's him. So just having those notes change and be be much bigger, and and you know, there's gonna be that bit of sort of like, it doesn't it doesn't have to be drunk, but it's gotta be, um, it's gotta be just more drastic. The the moves. Gotcha. I feel like that's the notes that I'm hearing. So at minimum, play with it and see what you think. But I think I think it's gonna come across a little more entertaining in those moments. Awesome. Yeah, I'll do that. But that was that was the big deal. Like that was really those were the the biggest things I had. So other than that, uh, the diction was good, the connection was good, the confidence was good. I, I thought you had a unique take on it. So now now the question is, watch it back and go, okay, how can I find ways to demand the audience's attention the way you did when you first popped in, you know? And that that requires you to play some different notes and to disturb the air in different ways. Okay. All right. Sure. Well, well done, sir. All right, we're gonna we're gonna sw switch back here, right, to Andrea. Andrea, hello, Andrea. Hello. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Happy. I'm sorry, I got kicked out of the meet. Something happened alive. with my phone. Yeah, that's okay. That's okay. So, uh, what'd you think? Um, I felt pretty good about that. It was definitely different for me for like moving. It was. I think it was kind of more difficult for me to figure out how to move the camera. Mm-hmm. Did you Rather than did just, you rehearse it quite a bit or no? Yeah, I did. I tried a bunch of different things out. Okay, so um, I really liked it. I, I and by the way, you're 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 a fine actress. You really are. Thank and, you. And so you, you just keep acting, just please. For, Thank you. For, for the world's sake. Um, <laughs> how old are you? I'm si seventeen now. My birthday was yesterday. I was about to say sixteen. <laughs> Happy birthday. Okay, Thank so you. so you need to. You're seventeen. You need to work on the next 10 years of your life, every day of your life, focusing on your diction. Got it. Slow down, work on your diction, 
the, the there were so many words in there that you could have used to your advantage that you didn't do. Um, just think, remember this, and just just like burn it into your brain. Consonants are my friend. There are, there's power in consonants. Consonants are what really tell the story. So if I lose those consonants, I miss the mark. And 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 especially when you're playing somebody crazy, or in this case, is she? You said she's a sociopath. Is that right? She, not really. She's, she's been, kind of hurt, like emotionally, and people called her a sociopath, but she isn't really that. She just kind of gave up with life. So she's like, oh, I'm accepting this label that everybody gave me. What's so. this from? Um, it's from a play called um, Dog Meets God. Yeah. Oh and yeah, it's yeah, like yeah, a, yeah. 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 <laughs> yes. Uh, but but is she like locked up or something? Did she say? She's in a mental institution. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So she's because a sociopath. She burned this girl's hair. So she's a sociopath. Like. Yeah. You know, partially, and and partially, mm -hmm. it's like, hey, what what people say, sometimes people believe, and then you know, and that's all about belief, you know. So uh, there's there, it's pretty deep monologue. But having said that, um, same type of critique for you. You need to let yourself go like really in like transition way in a, in a crazy direction and then come right back. I actually liked her the best when you played her very straight and kind and sweet because it's scary. You know, like if, if, if you're, let's put it this way. Um, now like I'm, I'm way too old and you're way too young, but just imagine that I was like, you know, 17 and, and, and you were 17 and, and you were super nice and like, and I'm like, oh, this is like a girl. It's like really cute, you know, like I could date this girl and, and you're super nice. And then all of a sudden you, you do something that's like crazy, but you look super normal and you're talking super normal. Like I'm going to be like, oh, dang, you know, like that's scary. Right. It's scarier, you know? Yeah. It's kind of like the little girl who's going, Ta <laughs> right? Like it's, yeah. it, it's scarier if she's just being a little girl than if, than if the little girl was trying to be crazy. So I would say lean into, lean into the normal even more, slow down. And then when you go nuts, find the way that she goes nuts and then bring her right back so that we go, wait a minute, did, did we just see what we think we just saw? And it, and it, and it'll be kind of like, it'll be fun, I guess, for us to watch. Um, yeah. So that was the first thing. Uh, buh, 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 buh. I thought your emotion was good. Your eyes were good. Connection was good. It was fun. Oh, I really liked your first camera move. Oh, thank you. So that yeah. was good. So now, and we're going to be working on this moving forward, you need more. So now that you've done one, it was it was good. I'm like, oh, okay. And it, it wasn't too like jarring. It was, you weren't moving too much. And then all of a sudden, then, it, then I got bored with that angle. Mm -hmm. So you gotta, you got to remember, we're all going to remember as we work through this, I have a responsibility to use the genre to my advantage to help me suck the audience in and, and keep them interested. Um, it's like Joey going to the wide angle, right, Joey? <laughs> right. You know what I'm talking about, Doug? Yeah. It's like all of a sudden, like, th like we just became more interesting. It's like the audience was getting a little bored of my close-up. Yeah. I mean, you know, every now and then you just got to spice it up a little bit. Thanks, Joey. That's a good ad. That's why the uh, that's why we put the camera in frame <laughs> and and like a half of the monitor. Yeah. Okay. Like, our our, ban oh, our banter's done, Joey. It, it was good banter, table. but the banter's done. Okay. So uh, Andrea, very very well. Is Andrea right? It's Andrea. Andrea. Yeah. Is that what you said, Brian? Yeah. Andrea. Yeah. I I was Brian like, got okay. it right. She okay. was on that's teen okay. quarantine, okay. so of course. Tomato, Brian tomato. Got it right. Andrea, Andrea, <laughs> Andrea. Well done, well done. Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that's a, that's everybody, I believe. So we're gonna come back together for a class photo. Did I miss anybody? Did I miss uh, Jenna's gone, right? Or is she back? Or did we talk to Jenna already? Did we? Yeah. Um, everybody, everybody. I think we talked to everybody. All right. So that is that is a wrap on the class. Thank you so much, monologue class. Love you guys. The script class. Uh, amazing, amazing work. Amazing progress.